So if I had known there was pegging in this book, I probably wouldn't picked it up, which would have been a mistake. Hey everyone, it's Deanne and welcome back to A Bookish Vineyard. On today's episode of Hump Day Reads, I am going to be reviewing Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I did receive an ARC from the author, so I'm not going to be going over any specific um, page numbers or specific word choices or sentences because ARCs are different than the printed book, but this book is set in New York. And so for today's drink, I am doing an Evil Twin Brewing because for the life of me, I couldn't find a wine. And this is even more JCS. So Evil Twin Brewing is pretty interesting because they are a nomadic brewer, primarily. So the brewer would go around to different breweries around the country and each one would, would produce a specific, a one-off specialty beer. So this one was actually brewed at Westbrook Brewing Company in Mount Pleasant, uh, South Carolina, but it's distributed by Evil Twin Brewing. And actually, in January of 2019, they finally got a location, an actual physical store, in New York. So I'm going with this. This is a 12% Imperial Stout, brewed with lactose and with vanilla and coffee added. So, we'll see. Oh, I can smell the coffee. <laughs> I definitely need coffee right now. I obviously need to get better at my beer pouring skills because look at the head on this. Should be about here. And I still have some left in the can, but I mean, look at the color of this. This beer is amazing. I absolutely would drink it again. The coffee comes through a lot, so does the vanilla. Um Oh my god. Yeah. I absolutely am going to enjoy this beer. Let me just set that down. Let it settle for a little bit and then we can get into the review. So, like all my hump day reviews, this one is going to be hot and steamy. And actually this is my very first five star explicit book of the year. And oh my god, y'alls, this is hot. So I'm not into pegging. It's not my thing. I've I've literally never read a story with pegging in it before and I have no I, I I've realized that I've started picking up books and I'm not reading what the books are about like I'll know the general like gist of it but I don't know all of the intricacies because if I had known there was pegging in this book I probably wouldn't picked it up which would have been a mistake because I absolutely adore this so characters there's Two main characters, Zenny, who's the main lead, she's the heroine, she is having to deal with the fact that her aunt Sable just died and she's she's not the executor uh, of the will, but she has to go, she's from California and she has to fly to New York to help pack up her aunt's house and deal with um, her inheritance. Along the way, she runs into Mason, who is a... Scott, he's a standard Scottish dude who's pretty, uh, from what the description says, he's pretty buff and just burly and hot looking. Um, and Mason is in New York in this tiny town that um, Aunt Sable was living in. And he also has an inheritance from Sable. So they collide, they first meet at Sable's, not funeral, but kind of like, memorial-esque-ish. It's basically, Zenny is releasing Sable's ashes into the river that's in her town, uh, in, in Aunt Sable's town, and that's where they meet because a, cu um, a couple of the townsfolk were invited to the, to the, um, the releasing of the ashes. And so that's where Zenny and, and Mason meet because Mason is there to play the bagpipes for it and they end up finding out that they both have to meet up with the local lawyer to figure out the inheritance, what's going on. 
So this is a marriage of convenience book because neither one of them can receive their inheritance unless they get married and they have to stay married for 30 days because Sable was wanted Zenny at, to get married and found her a husband. And along the way, Zenny finds out a lot of family secrets and she's grappling with the death of her aunt who she was really close to, plus all of the, the reveal of these family secrets that do shake up a lot in her and her understanding of who she is and her understanding of the family dynamics and the issues that have been going on. And along the way, she's falling in love with Mason. And Mason, he is, he gets the money because he needs to pay back his dad for a loan and he's kind of, his dad's back in Scotland, but he's always been under his thumb and not being able, he, and Mason hasn't been able to live his life the way he wants to because he has this very large debt hanging over him from his dad. So with the money, Zenny is completely set for the rest of her life because she gets $23 million. I... I don't want to wish ill on any of my family members, and I don't think any of my family members have that type of money, but damn, like I, I would absolutely love to come into $23 million at some point in my life. That would be great. And then Mason gets $100,000. But it's basically those two lovebirds trying to figure it out and falling in love, but also knowing that Zenny's only there for, I think, like two weeks. I think she's in the town for about two weeks, two, maybe three? but I think it's closer to two. So they're kind of like, well, we gotta get married anyway to get these funds. And I think you're hot and I think you're hot. So let's, let's fuck. That's essentially what it is. Now, uh, on to the sex scenes. I need some beer for this because these were really hot. So even though Zenny and Mason are only in each other's spheres for, like I said, about two weeks. They have a lot of sex. <laughs> like, a lot. So this book, let me see if I can remember all of the different ways that they have sex. There is cunnilingus. There is blowjobs, which we need a better name for that. Like, blowjobs is not as cool as cunnilingus. There is vaginal sex. There is the use of butt plugs. There is pegging, which was really hot, just really hot. Um, <laughs> there was, and I think there, like, I think the last one was that there was fisting. There's vaginal fisting in it. Yeah, I think I got, I think I got them all. So there's like six different ways that these people, that these two individuals come together and do the nasty and each one was extremely hot and very detailed and what's so fascinating is so like sex scenes are kind of supposed to push the plot forward and while these ones don't necessarily push the plot forward that much it makes sense because Zenny is dealing with the loss of a really good family member and she's not handling her grief well. Coupled with the fact that there's that the family secrets that come up which completely shake her entire understanding of who she is, people do, do things that they normally wouldn't do when they're in situations that are stressful, in, in situations where they don't want to deal with the emotions that they're feeling. So. Is there a lot of sex in roughly two weeks? Hell yeah. Yeah. But does it make sense because Zenny is not at all dealing with her grief? Like she'll, she'll, there's like hits, there's little bursts of it. Like, oh, okay, I'm gonna kind of deal with it right now and I'm gonna kind of cry, but I need to have a stiff, stiff upper lip because I still have work I need to do. Or now that this, this family secret has been revealed, now I'm going and talking to all of the family members and I just, I just can't deal with all of this right now. And it's super simple for me to look at Mason, who I think is hot and who is now my husband and just say, hey, you wanna fuck? Because I just need to get out of my head and I just wanna be here in the present moment right now. And in the present moment, it's me and you. So does it make, does it logically make sense? No. Does it make sense for her character with all the stresses she's going through? Yes. So 
the marriage is easy. We have to get married to get money. We have to stay together for 30 days. Might as well make the best of it while we're here. I think you're hot. You think I'm hot. Let's just do it and not get into, okay, what is it? What is it mean for my life now that my aunt's dead and I have all this this gigantic inheritance which is more than the rest of my cousins and more than my my mom and all of her siblings got from their sister so it's all of that navigating things where you know money like money can tear apart a family and she kind of needs she's she starts trying to figure that out like okay so do I tell people do I not tell people to tell them how much I got what am I gonna do with it so it's just it's all of those things that she just you know grief is grief hits everyone differently and with all of the things that are being shaken up in her life she just wants to go with what is quick and easy even though Mason's not quick <laughs> he's easy but he's not quick but she wants to go with the easier route. So, sex is great. The other thing I really liked, I think this is the first book I've ever read where white characters were just called white. There's no like, oh, they were as pale as the moonlight, or they were so pale that you could see their veins through, like, we don't need all that flowery bullshit. Like, I don't, I have never heard anyone in real life ever call someone who's white, like, oh, you know that, like, pale as the moonlight woman with the long, tawny hair that looks like grass or whatever, like, not grass, like the, um, I don't, I don't, like, it's the super flowery language that, to be frankly honest, I always skip over in books because I'm like, I don't, I don't give a damn that you're describing this person. Like their eyes are as green as the grass. Like, okay, like you can just say that they're green. You, you can just say that. So it was so nice that Rebecca just said, oh, they're white. When we were in uh, Zenny's head, it's just like, oh yeah, we walked into this, we walked into the courthouse and there's this older white lady. And immediately I had a mental image of like an older white lady sitting behind a counter. So it was so refreshing to just hear, oh, there's this white person, oh, there's this Asian person, oh, there's this black person, oh, there's, because in America, <laughs> in the United States of America, that's how we classify people. As fucked up as it is, that's how we classify people. So let's, it's a contemporary, let's just use that. Um, but yeah, also on the fact that she's black, like her conversations with her mom, you, if you're not black or from like a black family or are aware of black families and there is, there's a certain respect and there's a certain, there's certain things you just don't ever say to your mom or there's just a way that you have to speak to your parents and especially your mom. And especially in the black community, like Zenny's interactions with her mom absolutely had me thinking about all of my interactions with all of the older elder black ladies in my life and I'm just like yep nope nope that's exactly mm -hmm. even if you're pissed off at them for keeping secrets you're just like I just I need to take a break I can't talk right now but there's a certain level like if they call you answer or you text them back or you find some way to get in touch with them because they will come find you they brought you into this world and they will take you out like they will so her interactions with her mom over the phone was perfect. So it was just so lovely to see that depiction because I'm just like, oh, that's literally the black, the black community, that's the black family, that's absolutely positively correct. Yeah, the other thing I really liked about the book was Zenny and Mason's conversations about sex because they went into it knowing, hey, at the end of the, at, well, one, at the end of the two weeks or so that Zenny is leaving, that they're going to not be having sex anymore, but also at the end of 30 days that they're going to get divorced, because that was the whole plan. They're going to get divorced. So, but in the meantime, they actually took, they actually took the time to figure out what pleases each other. So there were multiple conversations throughout the book saying, yeah, like, even though I know that this is going to end, I see myself, you know, when I'm old and gray, I'll have, you know, next door neighbor and we'll both be like, we'll have been married and widowed and we're together and this is what we do sexually because even though we're older, we still deserve to be loved. And they went back and forth and that's actually how they ended up finding out 
doing the pegging scene because Mason was talking about like his imaginary when he's you know 30 40 years in the future his imaginary person who's going to be you know basically friends with benefits you know they would go and talk about who would who would be screwing each other in the ass and Zenny and she was just like oh okay whatever and then she looked at him she glanced at him and saw like how wistful his face was um and she's just like well you know let's make this happen I've never done it but I'm open I'm on board like if that's what's gonna please you then let's do that I mean that like for me like one having conversations about sex and what actually pleases each other for the love of God can everyone just do that just just if you're gonna have sex with someone just talk to them and see like hey do you, how do you like this do you like this whatever like what what can we do how are we how are we compatible sexually and then what I really liked also was the fact that both of the characters are bisexual and they, it, it comes up that they're both bisexual and I really like the fact that for Mason it wasn't just like oh yeah I'm bisexual like he actually went into detail not like specific details of how he had had sex with his ex-boyfriend but the fact that he had an ex-boyfriend and they were very serious and that kind of started the catalyst the not it, it, it was kind of the catalyst to what ended up breaking up him and his dad not that they not that him and his dad had a really good relationship anyway but the fact that he Mason had a boyfriend and his dad did not like it his dad apparently I, I believe is homophobic based off the under undertones of the the book I believe his dad is homophobic and so Mason's like, but this is who I am. I do like men and I do like women. And you trying to force me to be with a woman is not, not how it works. Like, I'm with this man. I liked it because it was just normalized in the book. He's like, I'm bisexual. This is my ex-partner. I think his name was Danny. I'm not going to go back and look, but I think it was Danny. And so he was like, yeah, we dated for this long, yada, yada, yada. Like, I wanted to be with him, etc. My dad got in the way. A whole, all this stuff blew up, and now I'm in the United States. So it wasn't just glossed over. It's, not, it's just really, I really like it because it's really good bi representation because it shows that, one, bi people, not all bi people are polyamorous because he was with his ex-boyfriend, and they were monogamous. They broke up. And now he's with Zenny, and since they're married, he's just with Zenny. So to wrap all of this up, I loved it. I'm giving it five stars. If you want pegging, vaginal fisting, butt plugs, vaginal sex, cunnilingus, <laughs> black representation, bi representation, um, if you want all of those things and more, you need to read Zenny.